Hello, welcome to Dinner with the Doctor recipe tutorials. Today we are going to be making an Indian meal. First off, we're going to start off with red lentil and vegetable curry, which I'll be showing you first, and then a cucumber salad, and then a dessert. We will serve this over rice, which I won't show you because it's pretty simple to make, you can Google it, and naan bread, which you can buy at the store. So. Join me as I prepare our Dinner with the Doctor meal for April 2024. First, we will saute some vegetables for the curry. Some onions, about one and a half cups. This is probably a little bit more than that. About three tablespoons of minced garlic and one cup of celery and carrots, each diced. Give that a little stir and we are going to put the lid on and check back when the onion is translucent and then add some seasonings. You can see that the onion is now pretty translucent. So now we're going to add about two tablespoons of minced ginger or grated ginger like I did. And then four tablespoons of curry powder, one teaspoon of turmeric, and three tablespoons of soy sauce or Bragg's liquid aminos, which is what I'm using. Stir this around and we'll let it cook for a little bit more and then we will start on the pot of curry. Now we're going to transfer our saute mixture to a pot because I didn't think enough ahead to just saute it in the pot but you can save some dishes by doing that. And we will add four cans of coconut milk, or I used half coconut milk and half water. We'll stir that up and bring it to a boil. Now that it's boiling, we're going to add three-fourths a cup of red lentils and four cups of diced Yukon Gold potatoes. Give it a stir and we will cook it up on a medium-high heat until the lentils and potatoes are soft. Okay, now we are going to test if our potatoes are fork tender. Looks great. And now we are ready to add our last two ingredients. One cup of red pepper and a cup of chopped spinach. I'm gonna cook this for just a couple minutes, two to three or so and then we'll take it off the heat and serve it over whatever kind of rice you like jasmine basmati white any kind of brown rice and cook, cook this for a little bit and here is our finished product curry red lentils carrots potatoes good vegetables it's going to be amazing over some rice with naan bread we're going to plate up our curry with a base of rice. I used basmati. Here's our curry. Pro tip is I'm using a metal pot and a metal serving utensil because if you use anything that's silicone or plastic with something that has a lot of turmeric in it, it's going to get very yellow. So just FYI, you either have to wash it really well or use metal or something that won't absorb the color. 
So here's our curry topped with a little bit of cilantro and green onions for a great Indian feast. Now we're going to make cucumber salad. We start with two cups of diced cucumber. I used an English cucumber, so I did not peel it, but you can use a regular cucumber and peel it. It's about one cucumber worth two cups. We're gonna add one cup of diced tomatoes, half a cup of red onion diced, fourth a cup of cilantro, and one green chili pepper that is seeded and diced. I used a serrano, or you can use a jalapeno or Anaheim, whatever suits your fancy, or just leave it out if you don't like it very hot. Then we're gonna use the juice of one small lemon, fourth a teaspoon Himalayan pink salt, half a teaspoon cumin powder, fourth teaspoon of black pepper or red chili pepper, chili powder. This is an eighth of a teaspoon of chili powder in addition. And then we're just going to stir it up. Just stir to combine and you can chill it for a little while, but you'll want to serve it fairly soon after making it alongside a delicious Indian meal. So now we're going to make our dessert for dinner with the doctor. We're going to make a chocolate avocado pudding or mousse avocados and chocolate with a little bit of plant milk, vanilla, salt, and the main ingredient, chocolate chips. So you can use whatever kind of chocolate chips you like. These are from Trader Joe's, they're pretty cost effective. Um, if you don't have very sweet chocolate chips, you might need to add a little bit of agave nectar or maybe maple syrup or some other kind of sweetener. But my chocolate chips are semi-sweet and I think it's gonna turn out fine. So the first thing we have to do is melt our chocolate chips. I usually do in increments of 30 seconds in the microwave and stir and stir and stir at each 30 second interval until it's completely melted. And I'm gonna do that now. Okay, my chocolate chips are melted. It took about three cycles, so a minute and a half, 30 seconds stir, 30 seconds stir, 30 seconds stir, and here we are with melted chocolate. It's four ounces of chocolate chips, which is about a half a cup plus two tablespoons. So we are going to actually add our avocados first and eight ounces of avocados or about two large avocados. I used a kitchen scale to measure my ingredients, but you can use the other versions if you don't have a kitchen scale. So two large avocados that are ripe and soft, pitted, and then just scooped into your um, food processor with the S curve blade. You could also maybe use a blender, but I always like to use a food processor just because it's wide, it's easy to work with, easy to clean out. And here we're putting our chocolate in. It's always hard to get the rest of it out. So if you're like me, you're probably going to lick the soup. Then we have a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I have it in a tablespoon, but it is a teaspoon. One fourth a cup of plant milk. So oat, soy, almond, any kind of nut, whatever you like. I'm not gonna add all of it right away just because I wanna see the thickness. That was about half of it. And then we have three tablespoons of cocoa powder. You can use any kind of cocoa powder. I am using the cocoa powder processed with alkali or Dutch cocoa powder just because it's a little bit darker and I really like a dark chocolate flavor. And then an eighth a teaspoon of salt. And we are going to blend it up. So I'm gonna come in for a closer look. Okay, here is our avocado mixture we are going to blend up. I always like to pulse it just so things don't get too crazy in there and everything sucks to the bottom. Okay, now I think everything's pretty well incorporated, but I do like to usually just scrape down the sides as I go so things will get evenly mixed and nothing will remain unprocessed. Not as important with this kind of a recipe, but recipes like burgers and such definitely like to scrape down the sides. And here we go. So there are only a few little clumps in there. I'm gonna scrape down one more time. 
Looks like a pretty good thickness. It is a pretty dark chocolatey color. Yours will be a little lighter if you use regular cocoa powder instead of the Dutch process, which is a little darker. And I think I'm probably pretty good without the extra plant milk, but we'll see. So nice pudding like consistency. You can make it however thick or thin you want. It will thicken up once it gets chilled in the fridge. So actually I'm just gonna finish this off and have it out, why not? See how this incorporates. Great, still sticks to my spatula, looks awesome. Okay, now of course we have to taste test it to see if we want to add any agave, so let's try it out. I like it, but if you want to, you can add one to three tablespoons of the agave. It will thin it out a little bit, so if you do want it sweeter, maybe don't add all the plant milk at first, add some sweetener taste kind of as you go and then we'll plate it up. I did mix this just kind of in the bottom just to scrape out the bottom, make sure everything got well incorporated. I chose raspberries as my pairing. I'm gonna put a few in the bottom. And then we'll put a little bit on top. And I would put some coconut whipped cream or some sort of whipped cream on top and then finish with fresh berries. And you could add some chocolate shavings or some dusted powdered sugar, but you can see it's a nice little pudding cup and go ahead and enjoy. I'm back. I forgot to say, since we melted the chocolate, it's not very cold, so it's not really like a typical pudding. So when you make it, make sure you calculate time to get it chilled in the fridge so that it's a cold pudding temperature. I mean, I enjoyed my serving just fine. It was kind of room temperature, but for a typical pudding, it's normally cold. So just calculate in some time before serving to chill it in the fridge so that it gets that nice temperature of cool, refreshing pudding.